Hello guys, here's the next tutorial for Unity and it is about the Amplify Shader Editor for creating your own shaders inside of Unity. In this tutorial I'm going to create a shader that uses two textures and I'm going to overlay one texture with the other one. I already opened here the Amplify Shader Editor, this canvas, which is a node editor to create your shader. So I right click and choose Create, Amplify, Surface Shader. Here it is, my new shader. Then I will set the file name and I will call this Texture Overlay Mask because I will use a mask for the second texture, but we will see this in a minute. I also change the name of the shader here in the editor. First I define a kind of group, a group name for this shader. This will be JNM Shaders and the shader name again to Texture Overlay Mask. Okay, great. Now let's define a material. So right click onto the shader and automatically a material is defined. The shader is assigned to that material and then I drag it onto this game object in the scene to assign the material to this. Okay, now let's define the shader and the material. I double click the material and now we are editing the shader and the material. Let's start by creating the textures. You can right click and then a menu will be opened and you can search for special nodes. For adding textures we would need the texture sample node but there's a shortcut for adding this. Hold the T button down on your keyboard and left click and here's the texture sample. Now let's select a sand texture. This one. This is the albedo texture. Now we can connect here. This slot to the albedo and after compiling you can already see the sand texture applied to our model. Now add a second texture to add the normals and here it is, the sand normal and let's connect it to the normal input. Then compile the shader and here's the result. But I want to overlay this texture with another one. So okay, let's create it. Hold the T button down again, left click to add a new texture, a new texture sample node. And we search for a rock texture, this one here. And again, a new texture sample for the normal map of this rock texture. Great, now how to overlay this? There's a special node you can use and this is called the Lerp node. You can reach it by holding the L button down and left click. And then let's connect the albedo of the sand and the albedo of the rock. And then put this to the albedo input, but it doesn't show up on our model and this is because we didn't define the alpha. The alpha is a kind of proportion between the A and the B input of the lerp node and the default value is zero, so set it to 0.5 and look at this, now we defined an equal proportion between these two textures. And now let's add a second lerp node, duplicate this by pressing Ctrl D and now it has the same proportion and we will use this now for the normal maps. Same logic, connect this to A and B and then the output to the normal input of our shader. Then compile and see the result. Now we overlaid two textures equally with an equal proportion, but my goal is to define a mask so that this second texture is only shown for the visible parts of the mask. The mask is basically a black and white texture and we are going to add this now. Again, press the T key and left mouse button down and then let's search for black and white texture that will act as a mask.
Yeah, this one could be nice. Okay, now how to define this? How to let this second textures, this rock textures, only appear for the white areas of this mask. Of course, we could just connect here the alphas and compile this. And then the overlay is only shown at the white areas. So we could define this as done. But I want to have more control over the strength of the overlay. And this can be done by adding a property of type float. The shortcut for adding floating values or nodes of floating values is holding the one key down and left click. And here is the node for a float. Let's change the name of this float node. Perhaps call this alpha overlay or you know what, we call this alpha mask because it defines the alpha value of this mask. Then I set the minimum to zero and the maximum to one and we get this nice slider here in the user interface of the node. Cool, now let's connect this. First I add a multiply node. This can be done by holding the M key down and left click. And then I connect the mask with the alpha node and this means that this black white values of the mask are multiplied with the value of the alpha between 0 and 1. Then I connect the output of the multiply with the alpha of the lot nodes. We are almost done. The last thing I want to change is to set the alpha mask to a property. This means we are able to change the value of the alpha mask in the material editor of Unity. And you are always able to change the textures for your material, for example here the mask and apply really interesting effects. Oh, how about this one? Select the alpha node and set the maximum not to 1 but to, let's say, 20. Compile it and then set the maximum value to something greater than 1 and get some very interesting effects. Or select a different mask And look at this. You can also modify the tiling of the mask. And get results like this. Just play around with this, there are endless possibilities. Guys, I hope this was interesting for you and you are impressed. If you liked the video, then let me know and don't forget to subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss a future tutorial. Thanks a lot for watching and see you soon on JNM.